So now we're going to um, pick up where we left off. We've pretty much got the building designed, the site designed, and um, now we're going to jump into some of the uh, code stuff, um, laying it out on sheets, etc. So let's get to it. Um, anyway, so we left off. looking at this building I can pull it back up so we can see the roof it's so got this building here <clears throat> pretty simple um, some roof drainage and a little bit of storefront here we're calling it autos autos I don't know if that's a real place or not um, so glasses are fogging up <clears throat> um, anyway, let's just jump right back in. So the one thing I need to check though is which direction the roof is sloping. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, building section. Sorry, it's saving. Okay, building section. So what we're going to do, section, building section, we're going to do one through the store going this way, and we're going to have it look the other direction. We want to see all the way through. So this, this is how deep you'll be able to see the view. <clears throat> so if I cut it shallower, you wouldn't be able to see this wall beyond. Um, but I'll show you a trick of, of how we can get around that and still make them look nice. <clears throat> um, we also want one, so this one we're going to name North-South section, building section. And then we're going to do another one an east-west all the way through like that it's gonna face that direction this one we're gonna call the east west building section okay now when we go to one of these heads what's going to happen is going to show us which direction everything is sloping. So right now we've got this big thick roof and this will include the structure and it's sloping towards our, um, our, our sectional doors. So we don't really want that to happen because we don't want water to come down and, and land here and then, uh, um, mess everything up you know leave a bunch of ice and have a slip hazard down in front where most people are going to be walking um, also you can see our our topography is is up a little bit too high so i think what we're going to do is we're going to have to lower this down so that it's flush grab this one too Lower it down six inches. And you can see that just lowered things down here. Looking pretty good. So um, we're going to change the slope of this roof. And we'll go to a uh, floor plan to do that. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn this one off and then grab this one and turn it back on. Change, make sure the slope is still a quarter inch per foot. And then when we go back to our section, now our roof is sloping the other direction. 
perfect. So now the water is all just gonna gather at this end. So we need to have a uh, roof drain that comes through and some downspouts. Um, I don't know if I have a model for those. Um, so you might end up just faking them in. It means that they won't show up here. Um, and this again is, is just a study question for, uh, or a case study for the architectural exam. So I'm just making these up um, as a study tool uh, for, for other people to use. <clears throat> All right, so it's looking pretty basic. Got the slope, got the door. The door might even have to go taller than what I made it. <clears throat> See now, nine foot. So this is also changing. See, I think nine feet is perfect height, but let's go look at what that did to our floor plan. Okay, so what we really want is nine foot height for all of these. Okay. Good. <clears throat> okay, so in this building section, we can add, begin to add some detail. Right now it's on course, so we're gonna put it on fine. So it'll show the layers of the wall. Um, then we're gonna, we're gonna begin joining some things. So the modify tool, we can grab join. <clears throat> there it is. Join. You can join this wall to the roof, and then it'll shade out that line, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. And then we'll also need to do this roof to this wall, and again, the roof to this wall. And that'll shade those out. So now what we have is. Um, I'm going to close some of these views that we don't need. So I can get around faster. <clears throat> so I think we have an issue of where these are going right now. And I I think what is going to happen is um, either we're going to have a ledger, so the studs will come up here, and then we'll have a little L bracket that will attach to the face of the studs to bear on, or it'll bear on top. Um, <clears throat> just depends how we're framing. So I think we're going to have a ledger, so I think this is going to be okay. So what that's going to look like is we'll do a, we'll end up doing a detail here of how this is going to come together. Um, but first, I want to add a, a detail item. I don't know if it'll let me. Nope, it just has beams. OK. So in the section. We're just going to do a call out here. And it is just a detail. And we're going to call it. Let's include that. And we're actually going to include to the parapet as well. This is our call out bubble. So right now it's just named detail zero. But we're going to call it. Um, So it is, we're just going to call it parapet detail. Uh, 
and then we go to it, we're going to have, it's going to look very similar to what we just had, but now we can begin to add details. So what's going to happen is we're actually going to have um, some detail items that we're going to add. We're going to, like, for instance, we'll add insulation, which I think we've got six inch studs here. There we go, wall width. And the insulation just has to stay continuous down to there. So here's where our, insul our building envelope is, is coming to. Then we're gonna have some bar joists going across. So let's see if we can add a bar joist. See if there is one. Oops, US Imperial. <clears throat> Detail item, metals, <clears throat> steel joist framing. Nope, go to it. Just some K series on the side. Okay. So this is where the studio companion comes in. I talked about this before. Um, I've got an older version, but we can look at bar joists and see what we think is, what size we think it's gonna be. So in here, we've got open web steel joists and um, it gives us the depth of the joists for the span that we have. So if you remember, we had, let's go check check really quick just on the floor plan dimension we're gonna span this whole thing this direction in one span and we're at 26 feet so let's just say <clears throat> roof and floor joists we're gonna be looking at So for 30 feet, we're looking at uh, 24, so like, let's call it 20 inch depth. So we're gonna load one of those. And you just cross reference here. We're just, we're just given a general sense of what we think it's gonna be. <clears throat> These are by CSI division, joist framing from the side. We're gonna get one that's 20 inches deep. So see here, depth is a foot. And that's the first number, K, the, before the K. So 12 inch depth, K, and then one pound per foot. Um, so we're gonna go down to 20 depth and give it Let's try somewhere in the middle. It's not too big of a span, so we're going to do a 20K6. And then go back to our parapet detail. We're going to. So this is backwards, so we're going to place one, grab it, mirror it, but don't copy. Okay, now it's facing the right direction. What's gonna happen though, we could have it like this, bearing on top of the studs and the studs interrupted, except that we want the studs to carry the load all the way through and we don't want a hinge point at the top here that wind could blow and just topple this, this over. So what we're actually gonna have <clears throat> is a ledge plate, a ledger on the inside here that'll take this bearing. We're gonna align it to our slope. And then what's gonna happen, we've got insulation and then our EPDM membrane, which is gonna go wrap up. So we've got this KL joist. We're gonna give a little more context here so they can clearly see that it's a bar joist. It's just barely clearing our garage door, so I think we're gonna have to lower those a little bit. 
So select all in the entire project. And instead of a nine foot height, I think we're gonna go an eight foot. Just to give ourselves some clearance. Perfect. So I didn't plan enough. We could have also raised the roof up, but I like this parapet height. So right now we've got <clears throat> two foot eight parapet height, which is good. Um, if we were gonna need someone to get on the roof up here, two foot eight's not enough, and so we'd have to have a railing. If the roof hatch comes up too close to the edge of the building, um, but we're not gonna get that detail for this. So um, I think though what we wanna do, I think we're gonna put this to an even dimension. Actually, we're gonna override it because it's sloping. We're gonna say, no, don't move it. Let me type it. Replace with varies. Because the height does vary and we're gonna reuse the same detail all over the place. <clears throat> so we've got our barge hoist then. The next thing that goes in is the the little plate, um, the angle that's going to hold this whole thing up. And that is going to be um, attached to each stud along the way. So um, just to represent that, we're going to add another detail component. And we'll go back. Again, it's in Division 5 for metals. And we're going to do... <clears throat> It is, it's not that structural steel framing maybe? Yeah, angles from the side. So side section angles, or we're gonna have, um, I forget what the other ones are called. Anyway, we just want an angle. And for this, we're going to need about three, three and a half to four inches of bearing. So again, here we're at an eight by six by five eighths is the thickness of the, the steel. So we're going to go down to a four or a three and a half by three and a half. Let's just do a four by four. Four by four by three eighths, that's pretty thick. And now, if we had a structural engineer on this, the structural engineer would be designing this whole thing for us, but um, since this is just for studying, we're gonna fake it in. I'm also gonna turn off this bottom line since it's not showing where I want it to. Um, or I can change the thickness. So if I go to the roof assembly, edit the type, and then edit the structure. Here where it says structure, and it's probably going to say steel bar joist, which is what I'm using. Come on. <clears throat> We're going to change this to 20 inch depth because that's what we had. Then we've got, it's only giving a quarter inch for metal deck, which is not enough. So metal deck we usually want at least um, an inch and a half probably more like let's call it two inches then rigid insulation on top so rigid insulation is about an r5 per inch so that's where we look at our energy conservation code um, and we go and look at what we need for our region. So that table, first you need to know what climate zone you're in. Which I am in a five B. And then we'll go to the efficiency table to look at our 
thermal envelope insulation requirements for the roof. And I said we're in a five, <clears throat> non-residential and non-marine. So insulation ab entirely above the roof deck is required to be an R30. The walls, since I'm here, on a metal framed are required to be R13 plus an R7.5 continuous insulation. Okay, so um, that's on table C402.1.3, if you're following along in the 2015 energy code. So let's put that in. So R30 and it's R5 per inch, so we're gonna need six inches of insulation. So this roof just got thicker. So you'll see, you'll see an update here. So it moved up. So what we what we want to do, I think, is we want to align this here and lock it, and then align this here. Okay, that will be what that looks like. And then this is gonna vary, so our, our structure got a bit higher, which is good. So we could put these conceivably back to nine foot, which is better. Um, select all in the project, put the height back to nine foot it up nice and close. <clears throat> we'll have a head detail here. We'll get to that in a second. So now our insulation needs to maintain the insulative value above here. So it needs to come up to at least here. Um, and then the head detail is probably big enough that we can't do it with a box beam of steel studs. So we'll probably end up doing it with um, tubes, either tube steel or a wide flange. Um, let's look at wide flange and see what, what looks good. Going back to the uh, studio companion here. All right. Side cast walls. Or we could have a Get, I get distracted looking through here. Okay, structural steel. So it doesn't like those. So so our cavity, we have six inches depth, so we want to keep a, a flange that wide if we can help it. And probably a W6 is going to be more than enough. So we'll put that in. Annotate component. Oh, hi, Shafta. Dog came in. All right. Um, next. So go back to oh st steel framing, and we're gonna go grab a wide flange in section. So they started at W forty four, which was really way too big. We really want like a W. Six, and I can't remember what dimension. So the six is describing 
the height of it. Let's go with this. I'm just going to load a bunch of these in and we'll see. It's not going to be any more than a 15. 15 is heavy. So the second number, so it goes W and then a number. The number is how tall it is. So between the two horizontal pieces of the the I-beam, or it's, it's technically called a wide flange. So that is the first number. And then it goes... Um, an X and then there's another number. Now the another number doesn't really um, give you a dimension, it gives you a weight per, per linear foot. And um, what that equates to is a, a price per foot because um, steel is sold as a price, price per pound. So then you can um, pretty quickly figure out how, how expensive these beams are gonna be if you know that steel is gonna be ten dollars a pound um, then you know that each linear foot of this w6 by 15 is going to be 150 dollars for instance um, the 15 is pretty big you know that'll that'll sit there let's just put a 15. And it should snap for me like that. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap brake metal around this whole thing. Um, and there'll be a, there'll be a, actually a steel lintel that holds up the brick right here. So honestly, what, what's going to happen, I'll, I'll put one of these in too, is, um, I'll just use this four by four. It's gonna sit like this, and I'll put thin lines on so you can see it's it's still pretty thin. But um, this is gonna sit here and hold up the brick, and it'll it'll actually be attached to the face of the stud and extend all the way out to hold that up. Um, or it'll just go all the way and span onto the, the um, bricks on the other side. So the next thing I think, because this is representing brick right now, so I wonder if, if I have a brick detail in here. So I do have a brick detail. So this is actually going to be resting like that. And that should give us one more brick at the top. And then it's actually going to get moved. Something like that. So that reads like brick. Because that's actually what's happening. The sheathing, we didn't put anything on. The EPDM is going to wrap up. Then we're actually going to raise this up a bit. Um, and the top is actually going to be wrapped with some uh, brake metal. So I'm going to shut the studio companion. I'm done with that for a minute. We're going to get into this other part. I'm going to turn on this light so I might change the lighting here. It's pretty bright. Anyway. Let's, so now I'm going to detail this parapet cap. So what's going to happen is at the top there's going to be some track. Um, component. I think we 
we have to load it. Yep, got to load it. Steel studs, which are in structural studs. So we're going to add the C and the channel. Okay, there are two types of studs. This one usually runs vertical with the little, the little teeth that run in. And then there's the channel, which is just the straight ones. And those ones um, run along the top and the bottom of the wall. And then you have the ones with the teeth that are actually like this, that run vertically. So we want a channel stud six inch to run along the top of our wall. And that goes right here to cap that off. There's actually one down here to cap that off. And then you wouldn't see it, but then there's technically a C stud, a six inch one. You wouldn't see it like this, but there's one running all the way down this middle line. So the next piece that we want is we're gonna just draw the, um, the parapet cap over the top. And what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a drip edge and then it comes up and I'm exaggerating this. And then it slopes so all the water comes in. And then it comes back down for a little bit and kicks back out. And when I turn off the thin lines tool, it'll look like that. And something like that. Yep. So give that a little bit of space. What's gonna go in here is actually just blocking um, so the contractor will just take some two bys, two by four, two by six, two by eights, whatever they have, and just put it in here. Maybe they'll put insulating foam or something in here just to help support this and help it um, not get dented up. Um, and this is this is exaggerated. I really, it really only needs to be sloped at like a quarter inch per foot. And then you'll you'll call out for technically a, a, a sealant right here if you're really um, worried about it. On this side, um, what's going to happen is the membrane roof, which I'll draw right now with a uh, hidden line. I'm going to draw it offset a little bit, half an inch. So it's going to follow here and then it's going to come all the way up to here and wrap underneath. So. What I can do is hoist that up. And I think I need to make a new line plate, line style. And this is all those lines that I had from the drop down list. What I need is a like a medium medium hidden. So that one is 
is going to be a three line thickness. Black is fine. And I'm going to say a hidden. So I think is just a dash and an eighth inch dash. So let's see what that does. Let's, since we, this is our first one, so we can, oh, we can't do that. So we're gonna switch this to medium hidden, which of course is too thick. So let's go back <clears throat> and we're gonna change that to a we're gonna put it at a two and we're gonna change it to a sixteenth inch dash better. Okay, so that's our that's our roof membrane that wraps underneath. So the way you think about um, water protection or uh, you know, water infiltration protection, I guess, is, you know, think about gravity and think about yourself walking out in the rain. <laughs> now, generally what you would do is you would put on your rain boots, then you would put on some, you know, waders or something like that that go um, either on the outside of the boot or include a boot and then you put a rain jacket over it and then a hat, right? So as the water comes down, it hits your hat first, then it hits the rain jacket, and the rain jacket keeps it on the outside of the pants. Now you wouldn't tuck your rain jacket into your pants and tuck your hat inside of your jacket because then when the water would come down, it would flow and stick to the surface of whatever it hits first, and then it would get sucked inside of your jacket or your pants or whatever. So same thing goes here. This parrot pit cap is the is the hat, it's the cap, and the water flows down and it drips off the strip edge and onto the membrane, which is what we want. If we had this the other way around, on this on the outside, and then the um, the cap on the inside, what would happen is the water would come down and it would just go inside of your water membrane. And then it's just on top of your insulation and decking and just gets right into your building. So um, of course that's exaggerated. So you just wanna make sure that you're always lapping the seams from the top side down. If that makes sense. And that's our membrane. Okay, so for a for a basic basic detail, this is pretty um, put together. Um, we've got a lot of the things kind of figured out. Uh, got our bar joists in. This bottom line really doesn't exist, so it should really be invisible, just like that. because that's how you would see it. This is technically the bottom of roof, um, but I, I think it's okay to just leave it like that. Um, it's a little unusual, but you know, it's, uh, it's fine. Um, then we begin to annotate everything. Now see this dotted line around the outside? That means that our annotation crop is on. I'm going to turn that off um, in most cases. And then um, you, we can try and tag some things, but it's probably going to say we don't have a, a tag loaded. Um, I don't really want to make a tag, so we're just going to text label things. Make sure you select what arrow you want to use. And we're going to have all of our things go off to the side. So we've got, starting at the bottom, 
Um, so this is going to be the um, sectional door beyond, just because that's beyond where it's being cut. And I guess if I pointed there, it's not beyond anymore now, is it? You don't really need to say a whole lot more because this is just a study, a study material um, detail. So then it'll let me align these things. Brick, uh, brick masonry. We're gonna point to this too. Might have to move that down. So this is our angle. Um, steel lentil. I think that's how you spell it. You might have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Steel lentil. My uh, spelling is pretty bad, so if you guys see stuff, um, leave it in the chat or in the comments, and uh, and I'll pick pick it up from there. So, okay. Let's move this down to give it a little little bit of space here. Steel lintel, brick masonry, we've got this is our so this is our uh, header. We don't need to call out all the stuff in here because we have that other wall section that I showed in the last video. Um, we do need to call out some of these things though. So this is going to be the uh, angle. This is the bar joist. Six inch rigid insulation. Gonna be the roof deck got in between two inch roof deck. Okay, and then we've got our membrane roof. And I can just say membrane roof. metal cap okay um, I guess I can just start labeling some of these things too this is six inch studs with uh, I forget what I said in the other one 
R19 installation. And sheathing. Okay. I guess I can point this a little further out so they can know what I'm talking about. Okay, that is a detail. So we'll save really quick. Anyway, sorry, dog's barking in the background. Okay, that's our parapet detail. That tells a lot about what we're intending to have happen the rest of the building. Is we're allowing a variable height here, but we should probably say what minimum we want. Um, so below we're gonna say two foot minimum. Two foot minimum. And um, that gives a that gives a lot of information in one one detail. I like to try and give more information in less details than less information in more details. That makes sense. Um, and this this will cover a lot of a lot of things. Um, okay, let's go back to this. So we've got this one now figured out. This one's gonna be similar, so we don't need to really call that out. Um, we can go and look at our east-west building section. There's gonna be at least one there that we'll need is this one. Really the only thing that's gonna be different is this header, this window head detail. Um, which I think I'm gonna steal from another project of mine. Um, anyway. Gonna open it. It is in this one. this project and borrow a detail because we have one that looks just like this. If you all uh, have questions or anything feel free to leave them in the in the comments or uh, in the chat if you're watching on Twitch. Um, I will be trying to do other things besides this as well coming up. I'm, I'm just wrapping up a few projects um, right now and uh, I'm hoping to be able to get back to streaming some Tropico and some other things um, besides just work. So let's look at some details here. And I've got some got this head detail and jam detail that I can borrow. These show wood, but that's easy enough to switch out. Um, so I'm going to, oh, uh, these are all at stucco. That's not really going to help me. So I really don't need this project, actually. Um, anyway. Let's go here. Pull this to the outside. We're gonna name it. 
We're gonna name it typical store front head detail. Okay. Now what we've got, we've got the wall. We're gonna put it on fine. So now we want to try and keep our um, details the same, but um, this one being on the other side, I don't think that's going to work. So let's start the whole process all over again. So here we're going to do a component and do um, so first let's just start with insulation. That's just the easiest place to start. Start drawing that up. It's going to have another lentil uh, and a head again, so we can grab those. Another 4x4. Four four. Like that. And we can grab another wide flange. We use a 12 or a 15. We used a 15. So this is a, a larger span, so it definitely has to be a bigger. Here we go. That goes there. Oh, I know what I forgot to detail on the last one, but we're gonna have a, a cover piece that comes down and wraps the inside. But, um, anyway, we didn't call anything out. We might, we'll, we'll go back and fix that. Okay, so here's uh, where where we want the storefront to lay, and I think we can. So we can move this in in the plane, so we can have it flush to the front, flush to the inside. Those are both very difficult to build. Typically, you want it to kind of span the air gap in our in our thing here, as I've had have it placed now. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're also going to flip-flop the glass to the outside. I, I like that look better. It kind of mirrors what we have going on here where this is slightly cheated to the outside and then we have more space on the inside here. It's kind of mimicked here. Um, so again, uh, on, uh, what I forgot to do on the other one is drywall is gonna come down and wrap here so I didn't put that in there um, and since it's the other one is on the exterior it's gonna be mold and mildew resistant um, chipboard um, on the outside here um, what we'll have is through wall flashing and this this is actually too small of a lintel what I need is a seven, six and a half inch depth. So let's see, six and a half inch depth. So let's do a six and a half. Six by six by three eighths. Sure. Oops, that was a wide flange. Oh, no, it wasn't. Six by six by three eighths. Just had the wrong family selected. So it's technically going to land like this because water will infiltrate through your brick. And then you have this air gap here of two inches for the mason to get his hand back there to position the bricks and wipe the back or whatever. But inevitably water will get in. So you need to have a plan for how to get the water out, which in this case is through wall flashing, which I'm just gonna represent here with a line. Um, and we'll give it a drip edge so that the water doesn't just capillary its way back under the building. So um, for that, we're gonna grab medium lines again, and we're gonna exaggerate it 
but what what's basically going to happen is it comes down to some point and then it slopes outside the building and then it's got a little lip on it like that and then up here it's counter flashed um, to help with all of that so that's our through wall flashing um, we've got our storefront this is going to wrap under either that steel lentil is going to be fine on the inside we have chipboard so component I wonder if it's loaded nope so we go and grab this go back up to our finishes plaster and gypsum board gypsum board gypsum board wall section got it I had to escape a couple times gypsum um, board and um, commercial properties use 5 eighths as a standard residential uses half inch as a standard so then what we're going to do is draw it And it's drawing the wrong way so we draw here and we draw it there and of course it drew on the wrong side I mean I guess that's fine and this scale is actually gonna be more like an inch and a half Ooh. <laughs> Puppy says hi to the world. Oh, wait, here. Hi, <laughs> buddy. Oh, yeah. Nugget Bear says, I'm going to be famous because I'm so cute. Everybody look at my face instead of his boring crying. I have a cute face. Hi. Well, Nugget Bear, you're happy, buddy. I know you like it up there. Okay. <laughs> this is the dance intermission. <laughs> There's no music playing, so. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Is it now? Mm -hmm. I met my step goal by dancing, by the way. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Puppy dances too. Okay. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You went back up here. Okay, everybody's in here. That's bad. Okay. Okay, go. All right, come on, puppies. Go, go. Good boy. <laughs> uh, okay. So the gypsum board is going to wrap around just to hide that steel. That's what I forgot on the other one. Um, parapet detail. So, see, right now we've got it's exterior and the door comes in and just closes right here so honestly what we need is um, something to wrap around we also need this at a larger scale so you can see all the detail of it 
So the lintel is fine showing, but we need something to close this gap, which is where we're gonna probably just use um, brake metal. This is also the wrong lintel you saw in the other detail, how this is actually like this, and it needs to attach to the sheathing or preferably directly to the studs, but um, probably through the sheathing like that. Um, this helps break up all of the other things too. We could probably put it at an inch. There we go. That's better. Okay, let's go back to the storefront head. So this is where we want the storefront to be. Technically, the it bumps in for the glass, but this is this is going to be fine for um, our purposes. Let's put in the brick, and we're going to push this to the back, so it shows our. And this we're going to move up actually so that it comes through a mortar joint. Something like that. So there's just enough slope to get the water out and then it drips off. Um, so that's pretty good. That's going to be fine. Typical head detail. Um, the jam in the sill is, is not going to be too bad. Um, honestly, what I like to do better is grab this whole storefront and offset the base six inches so there'll be a six inch curve. And um, and then lower this to seven foot six, just like that. So then there's a little bit of a base um, to help keep water from just going underneath the sill of the the storefront and into your building. So that's just really a good a good trick for um, wet climates and and cold climates. So there's that. Now we can call everything out. Um, again, it defaults to having the annotation crop on. I'm going to turn that off and then we can start text noting. Okay, and each time to your drip board. Come on. Gypsum board. Store front head. Store front system. So add the through all flashing to this one. The other assembly is the same. Let's go back to the other detail. So we didn't draw that on here. We should probably do that. So detail align. So what's going to happen is technically it's going to come down to here, come out to here, and give a little kick out like that. That's our through wall flashing. And then the building wrap is actually gonna come and lap over the top of it. So we're gonna just say like this. 
So the building wrap and then some um, other flashing is going to come over. Remember I was talking, if we just left that open, the water would want to infiltrate behind it. We want, we want to kick the water to the outside and, and kick it to the outside of our building. Okay. And as I go through, I just kind of think of these things. Um, you're, you're never going to get it perfect, but, um, you know, you just want to give the the idea, the design intent of your, your building. And then it's to the contractor to um, also build it right. Okay. We're keeping these simple so that uh, everything else can go smoothly. So this section one is the one that we want to use as part of this. Um, so this is the wall assembly. Wall assembly, that's what we're gonna call it. Um, okay, so we've got floor plan, site plan, building sections, details. The other thing that we're missing are wall sections, but I guess we can we could include one. The other thing we haven't touched on is the uh, we haven't touched on the um, foundation just yet. So right now we've just got this basic slab that comes it comes on top and technically we're going to have turndowns on the edge and we're going to put those in slab edge detail oh it didn't do it all right so we're going to need floor plan floor slab edge We're gonna just put Okay, I'm gonna close this 3D for right now. And I'll come back and show you periodically. But um, now that I've added those turndowns, now it, it looks right. So these are only appropriate for up to a certain size building based on your on your building code and your region. Um, in a colder region, you'll have to dig your foundations below the frost depth. Also, the size of these will be sized by a structural engineer to take the specific load of um, whatever the soil pressure can take. So that's determined by a structural engineer and by a geotechnical engineer that will tell you um, the geotech will say how much bearing the soil will be able to withstand. So we're just doing this pretty basic. Um, we've got that that base right here and uh, the interior walls you can see it cutting through. Yep. So on on course, which I think most of these are, uh, I'm going to attach this to the structure and um, I think I want these filled in gray. So I'm going to I'm going to do that on course fill this in fill pattern solid and I want it this kind of dark gray. And then this one on course. This one fill. Okay. So so that now it reads like Here's your whole thick thing. We're cutting an opening here for it. Um, 
And then, of course, we want, also want our slab to read the same way. So on course, we want it to read this gray and read solid as well. Just like that. So now our east-west is, is reading a little bit better. And now I'm going to go to the north-south, and we're going to switch it to course as well. And that just, that just reads a little bit nicer. Um, oh yeah, the view depth. See how we're seeing things that are beyond and they're just equally as dark? So we're gonna change that too so that it reads a little bit nicer. Um, we don't, uh, let's do, is it far clipping? No. Display graphics, I think. Yeah, here we go. So depth queuing. So we want to bring this in to like 50. So it's going to cut off and it's going to be So now it, the shallower you make this is the sooner that it's going to get to this 20%. So now if I make this full dark, it's going to be dark. I think what I normally do is 50 and 33. So now this is going to read a little bit lighter in this view. And then everything that's cut is full black. I'm also gonna hide these cars in the in the um, building sections because you're not gonna build the cars in the drawing. Okay, we've got that header. The only thing we're really missing are our door sections. Um, for this, uh, I don't really want to mess with those. Um, the next thing, we're just going to lay these out on, on drawings as quick as we can. Um, I already made one sheet. It has just the basic Autodesk um, thing on it, so we're going to need to get rid of that. Gonna delete it. We're going to say the client name is... Oops, load this back in. Oh, got a text message. So that's fun. Our phone announces who we get text messages from. Okay, so manage. Let's save really quick. We're going to manage our project information. And the owner autos autos. We're gonna just say one, two, three, fake street. Oh, it wants me to edit this. I guess the project name goes here, actually. And the owner is, um, Let's call it, who should the name be? Stacy. Stacy Otto, sure. All right, let's Text keep going. Um, this is really annoying, the thing. <laughs> Tell my wife to turn it off.
Okay, back to it. Okay. Okay, we're making sheets. First sheet is usually a cover sheet. I don't want to make a cover sheet because this is just for um, study material. So this first one is going to be um, the site plan. Project number, issue date, yada, yada, yada. Nobody really cares about that. Scale, whatever. Timestamp, sure. Oh, I forgot to take that off. We're going to take that off too. <laughs> Why would it have um, Autodesk website that, in my title block? That's stupid. Uh, load that back in. Overwrite. And that should go away. Okay. Description, yada, yada, yada. A101. So now we can put our site plan on here. It doesn't show a whole lot. Um, we're going to crop this view down. And we're going to pull it. We're gonna need to pull our views in too. Looks good. Other thing that I want to do is have our uh, building shaded in so that it stands out a bit more. Graphics on course, it should be. I'm just going to override this in view to have a surface pattern. <laughs> Perfect. Go to gray. Okay. We're gonna need to dimension our property lines. And this property line. Now to the 16th is a, a little excessive. So we might end up changing that um, 15 foot setbacks. It's fine, zero on the sides over there. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty basic. We're going to put some text on our building to say um, Okay. And now we can really pull this in tight. And we'll be able to blow it up bigger. We're going to make it, because right now it's at 1 to 20, which is like an engineering scale. We're going to put it like quarter. All right. Pull this on here. Quarter might be too big. So three sixteenths. Okay. There we go. Three sixteenths. 
14, so it's good. It's a weird scale. It's going to be fine, though. Site plan. OK, there's our first sheet for the site plan. The thing is, I'm not sure why this is so much bigger than it needs to be. OK. OK, there's our site plan. Keep things simple. New sheet. Sure. So it should be A102. This is going to be the floor plan. There's only one, so I'm only calling it floor plan. The other thing we don't have are ceiling plans, but um, we're going to be okay with that. So we've already shown all of this in the um, site plan, so we can really crop this down to be just the building. So that's what we're going to do, is really p tighten this up. But we also want to pull our elevations in. I wonder where that one went. I think it got rid of it because the the view line is so far away it uh it gets confused so we can pull these in now and really crop this down Okay, so we've got that. Let's pull this all in. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the um, the parking. Let's hide category. Okay, good. Now we've really got lot on just a small area so now what we're gonna do is pull it back on okay that's our floor plan and then we can also fit a roof plan on here we'll make sure it's also at a quarter inch scale this one's probably gonna We want them to line up on the page so that things can um, just line up where they're going to. This cut plane is too low, so we need to adjust the cut plane so we don't need an underlay. We need to put a slope arrow, annotate, slope. So it's all sloping this way. There's no slope on the top of the wall. That's just our basic roof plan. 
This is our floor plan, which covers all of our dimensions. Um, has all of our rooms. We can put our room schedule over here too. So we've got room schedule. Okay. Room schedule. Uh, what else are we gonna need? We didn't tag our doors, so door tags are gonna need. Uh, we tagged our door. We don't need leaders, so we're gonna turn that off. We actually want them to be along here. These are technically doors, so we'll tag those just like this. So we're going to tag windows. Windows get a diamond. Oh, walls get a diamond, right? So this is actually going to be a got a door here. Okay, now we've got our doors labeled. We're not going to give a door schedule, but we just want the plan to look realistic. Um, these interior wall partitions, they'll usually have a type associated with them, like when you'll tag them. Um, you'll just say what kind of wall type it is. I guess I'm gonna just call these an A type wall. We've got a window here and a wall here. Okay. Come on. Computer's freaking out right now, so. Okay. Got that. Okay. All right, what else do we got? We don't need to tag furniture, that's just shown to show that we have room for things in here. Um, the next sheet is going to have elevations and sections on it. I think we can fit quite a lot on there. Um, this roof is covered in the sections. We could fit sections on here too, but we'll see if we need that space. So now we've got... Let's, this is no longer floor plans, we're just going to call it plans. The next one is just going to be sections. So we're going to have another sheet. New sections. We're going to call this one sections. The numbering is a little weird on the sheet numbering, but um, I don't really want to get into that. That's a whole separate conversation. Um, if you want, you can follow the National CAD standard on that. So, um, National CAD standard sheet numbering. 
So in the National CAD standard, it's got a bunch of different, uh, it's basically a five digit designator. The first two are like a, a sheet ID and then a discipline designator and then two for a sheet number. Not everyone agrees with that. Um, and then they've got kind of a standard thing. The sheet type is uh, zero for general, 100s are for plans, 200s elevations, 300 sections, 400 large scale views, like in large plans and large elevations, stair sections, things like that. 500s are details, 600s are schedules and diagrams, 700, 800 are user defined, 900 is 3D views or representations, other things like that. Um, we're not really going to follow that because we're mixing all of our sheets together. So we're going to now add our east-west. And we're going to add our north-south. Okay. And it's just generally showing some of these things. We can just show our, our heights are mostly covered by the roof, but we can cover those on the doors as well since we don't give a door type. Um, also, if you look at doors, you'll see this dotted line that indicates where the hinge is. It always points to where the hinge side is. So the hinge side is this side in this instance. Um, okay, so there's those sections. Let's put our wall assembly over here and it's filed under building section, so that's not right. So we're actually going to reclassify it. Come on. Activate the view, and then we're going to switch it to detail. And we're going to name it to exterior wall assembly, actually. And if you had multiple of these, that's when you would say exterior wall assembly A or B, and then you could start to line up on your plan or on your elevations wall section A is down here, wall section B is up here. Um, okay, so we got that. We've got the parapet detail. So this is a big one. So what I really want, since this is at um, inch to a foot, I think this one is gonna, oh, this one's also at an inch to a foot. Because really what should happen is these two should line up. I'm just gonna leave this one down here though. There's our parapet. Then we've also got our typical storefront head, which should also be at an inch. It is not, so we're going to put it at an inch. We're going to move this over. Okay. Okay. There's our details. That kind of describes what's going on. This is kind of the key detail that describes a lot of what's happening. Um, what else do we have? We have elevations, we could put those on here. Um, let's see if they're gonna fit. So this one's really wide, but that's because our crop is so wide. And we're gonna pull these in. that they just get what we want. OK. 
Okay. And then... The fastest way to just redraw that line is to delete it in, off the sheet and just redraw it. So now we're going to have our north elevation. East, we're going to have to do the same thing. East is pretty boring. Um, okay, like that and like that. We're also just going to hide these in view. So that they don't show. Come on, deactivate the view. Okay, east. Grab the south. Gonna do the same thing. Okay, south one. I don't want to show quite so much um, earth below, below grade, so I'm going to pull these up a bit. Now that box around it won't print but um, sometimes I like to turn it off anyway. And then the last one, the west one. Okay, so now let's drag this up. Come on, get in there. Okay, pull this back on. Good to go. Just like that. So now we've got it on there. Move all of them. How big did we make the sections? All right, quarter. We might be able to fit them at quarter. Really want them all to be the same scale, so we'll see if that fits. have to adjust those um, section markers so they don't cross down. This is the really annoying part of Revit is having to do all this. So let's do that.
pull this so it's barely below. Okay, so there's that. Next one. Pull this down. So it's like just above. So this is just below. Scoop this up. Oh, God. Worst part of the whole thing. Like we didn't we didn't detail how the signage is connected we there's just a lot missing from this that um, that I would not do normally I would not leave it blank normally so yeah but this is just a study project so we'll uh, we'll let it slide I'm gonna bring this down Okay, I think we got it. <laughs> this sheet is pack full of details. Okay, chock full of details. Got a bunch of stuff going on. We've got, so, so far we've got floor plans, which is the, we've got site plan, which is the, uh, just the site plan. We've got the plans, which is the floor plan and the roof plan. They're both pretty basic. Then we've got these sections and elevation, so we're gonna call it that. Sections and elevations. Got it. Do we need anything else? Um, I don't think so. We're gonna save this, and I think that's all we need. So thanks for sticking with me this whole time. I am going to be wrapping up here shortly. Um, the next video I'll be writing the questions about about these uh, this design that I've just done for you. You all let me know if you like it in the comments or or the chat or or whatever um, platform you're on. I hope to catch you soon. I, in a couple of weeks, I'll be finishing up a lot of these projects and things for work and I will be able to start streaming games again. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you haven't already hit that subscribe or that like button um, below the video and uh, let me know what you guys think. If you want me to keep making more of these, you gotta hit that like or subscribe button. Thanks.